We think of growing up as a time of carefree and joyful exuberance, growth, and exploration. A time when children start each new day with a sense of wonder and curiosity about what life may bring them and what they may bring to the world. At the same time, they may wonder how to make and keep friends, how to do well in school, how to cope with various family difficulties, or how to be happier in general. Many times, these concerns can become overwhelming, and children may lose a sense of their own inherent good qualities. Qualities such as patience, tolerance, perseverance, and compassion can be cultivated like seeds helping them grow into happy and self-sufficient adults. There is a tool that can help children plant these seeds. It is called Anapana Meditation. Anapana is a simple concentration technique which actually means incoming and outgoing breath. The technique was happened upon by a boy who had come to be known as the Buddha. While sitting under a tree, when he was about five or six years old, the boy began to spontaneously observe his natural breathing. Later, he would use Anapana on his way toward enlightenment and the discovery of Vipassana meditation. Through practicing Anapana, children begin to learn how the breath is intricately connected to their state of mind. Meditation teacher S. N. Goenka of India developed this Anapana program for children after many of his students requested it. Mr. Goenka learned the practice of Anapana and Vipassana through his teacher, Sayaji Ubakin of Myanmar. There are now over 200 Vipassana centers around the world offering both 10-day Vipassana courses for adults as well as short Anapana courses for children and teenagers. When children and teens come to the course, they agree to observe five promises throughout the course. And one of them is to not drink alcohol or drugs. No, no. harsh words, lies, backbiting. Yeah. I forgot the other one. Another one is to not kill. <laughs> And no misconduct, I'd, wait, yeah, yeah. Another one is to not steal. Another one is to, to not like push or harm. The children learn how to focus their attention on their incoming and outgoing breath. While trying to do this, the children begin to face the many distractions that begin arising for them. The teachers ask the children questions, provide clarification, and tell them stories to inspire them to keep practicing. If it was really difficult for you to keep your eyes closed, the whole time, or most of the time, try, try a little harder. Try to keep your eyes closed because you know by keeping your eyes closed, you won't get distracted, right? And you'll be able to do what? Cushing? Observe your breath. You can observe your breath. Excellent. Where? Where are we observing our breath? Vinay? <laughs> at the entrance of at, the nostrils. Correct. So at the entrance of the nostrils right here, you can observe your breath coming in and going out. The outdoor playtime allows children to relax and try to integrate what they're learning in the meditation hall.
On my first and second courses, I would open my eyes a lot and say what's going on and how long were we meditating. Now I found it easier to concentrate. Even though some things might disturb you, it's a lot easier than before. It's a technique to observe natural breathing. It's a purely uh, non-sectarian meditation technique. When they first said it to me, I didn't really understand it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna focus on my nose. All right, and it didn't really work and stuff, but you gotta focus on the breathing. It's not just focusing on the breathing, it's a focusing of the now. I like um, the arts and crafts and making new friends and people, but I, I also like meditating too because it helps me have more patience with my sisters and it just calms me down. This is my fifth. We've been to one in Australia. I've been, I've been to two in Australia. They actually see the results, my children from what they've done with the children's courses. It makes the parents' life easier too, I think, than having to discipline them so much and having to down the line actually put a wall between you and them by being the bad person, by saying, no, 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 you can't, you know, you have the wisdom, but they don't essentially. But the wisdom that they learn from themselves is, I think, a much better wisdom, knowing that their choices are, are not the best sometimes and learning from it. I think it's a real gift to give children the awareness of respiration. Children won't naturally come to that themselves, so being given this tool to observe the breath is, I think, key, because that connection between the mind and the breath is something that the child can take with him or her wherever, wherever they go. After serving these courses for a few years, you see the children come in when they are eight years old and often unable to even keep the eyes closed. And I've seen those children go from being eight to being teenagers, and it's this wonderful opportunity for us to serve children and accompany them to this path of development. Who can explain why we are using the breath as the object of meditation? It's directly linked to your mind. If your mind's agitated, like you're angry or you're sad or something, your breathing patterns usually reflect that. Like if you're angry, you might be huffing and puffing, while if you're tranquil and calm, your breathing is natural also. It's kind of a feeling of, I don't need this, I don't want this that can kind of go around in your, in your head, but then when you actually are able to calm yourself down, you see the benefits. At the beginning, there's kind of a resistance to just not doing anything. Let's say I'm doing homework or something, and I'll, I'll be kind of scattered, and then I'll, I'll wait, and I'll practice for five minutes, and then I'll just go through a whole sheet of math problems in a few minutes. Just because you're so centered, and your mind is so powerful when you're so centered. Yeah. When he would act in a play, uh, things in which he's seen by a lot of other people, that's a stress situation. He, I would often see him sort of taking a break and doing a little anapana. Uh, I didn't know he does that. I mean, it's just like, just by surprise, I just kind of got to know that he does that. So all I came to know was it became a resource for him among the other resources he has. Mm -hmm. And he was beginning to use it as and when it would make sense to him. It's been really nice to see kids develop and then continue and even start adult 10-day courses. We've seen that happen too. Obviously as a college student there's a lot of stresses, there's the exams. Most of the time before a test you just find yourself subconsciously observing your breath all of a sudden or observing your sensations and it's just something that you've been trained as a little kid to do and now it just comes like second nature and just happens and that really helps. You know, I can observe the differences between myself and my friends who is completely neurotic before tests. And I'm just like, okay, whatever, let's take the test and see what happens. So, yeah. Being able to just sit down and have that quiet time when you're focusing on your breath, it was really, it was sort of like a calming exercise. And, and that, right, could, you could bring that back to your house. My mom was diagnosed with cancer for about eight years before she passed away. 
And through that whole time of me growing up, she would really take what you learn at a 10-day course or the values you learn in a children's course, and she just used it in her day-to-day -day life every day. That really helped me be okay with her being so sick because she was so strong about it. She would always tell us that, you know, everything's changing all the time, and she'd be very equanimous and just so inspiring that it made it easier to deal with. Seeing her practice Vipassana throughout my childhood really inspired me to take a course. Vipassana helped her a lot in her life, so I just thought that it would be a good thing to do. Meditation is supposed to help me find out what the truth is, like why is this this way or why should we do this? It helps me to calm down even when I'm really angry. I usually do find that, oh my God, I'm angry, I'm gonna try to calm down. It won't be like straight away, oh, I'm angry, calm down. It takes a while, but I still observe my breath after a while. It helps me feel like I'm doing something wrong and I shouldn't do it. It helps me get more motivated into saying we should stop arguing or find a compromise. We can see a remarkable change in her that she's more compassionate with brother, with her classmates, friends. She's more compassionate, helping them. Just by helping others, it doesn't only make them feel better. I also feel special in a way. The children and teens are planting seeds of awareness. And they're taking home a practical tool, one they can use at any time eyes open or closed to help them in their everyday lives.